because I get up on the stage, I hold a micro microphone with my teen pregnancy, with my divorce, with my insecurities, with my fears, and I tell the devil, you know what? You picked on the right one because this heel is huh. gonna pick up my foot and I'm gonna crush it over your head every single chance I get. I grew up, obviously, in a household where prayer and church were very much a constant in my life. But I think that one of the misconceptions about being a Christian is that once I give my life to Jesus, that I'm not going to feel any more pain. When in actuality, when you give your life to Jesus, that's really when you begin to have all of these things come to the surface. Mm. And I believe that God puts us in circumstances for those things to come to the surface so that we can become the person worthy of the purpose he has for our life. And so you could have never told me as a teen mom that there would be ministry down on the inside of me. I felt rejected. I felt like the church was definitely not a place for me because I didn't do everything the right way. And then I realized that there was a we connected to that. And because there was a we, there was someone else who needed to hear my story, someone else who needed to understand that they are not the only one who has felt the way that I felt. Then it gave me strength. But I don't think I would have had that strength unless life didn't go the way I planned for it to. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is such a word for, for anyone really who's watching and you're saying, listen, my life is crazy right now. I can't understand how any good can come out of it. I would say to stop looking at the circumstances and dare to look within, who am I becoming as a result of my need to survive? Who am I becoming as a result of my need to press in like never before? God, what are you trying to show me in the midst of this storm? And when we surrender everything, even the idea of how our day should go, how our marriage should look, how our kids should be raised over to God and say, show me, teach me. I want to learn. I want to be a servant in this process, then I believe that we begin to get clues about our purpose. I believe that. You know, PT, there's, there, there is so many people locked down and polarized by their mistakes and by their failures. I want us to believe, I want you to speak to uh, the grandmother mm. and the mom that is feeling as if their prayers are falling to the ground, yeah. they're tripping over them, and that nothing is going to happen. Uh, you were there. Yeah, I think that the, the best uh, word to sum it all up is Hebrews 10 and 35, which says, cast not therefore away your confidence, wherein there's great reward, for you have need of patience, that after you've done the will of God, you shall inherit the promise. What it's saying is, it says, first of all, cast not therefore away your confidence. That word that was translated confidence is the word, it can be better translated, expectation. It says, don't cast away your expectation. You know, um, hope deferred makes the heart sick. Uh, when we are disappointed or let down, uh, we have the tendency to surrender our expectation, yeah. and uh, and the and the word says that that you can't cast away your expectation because therein, in that expectation, is your reward. In other words, if you can hold on to the word that God has given to Come you on. and and let that see the word is strong enough to withstand your disappointment. Wow! You just got to make sure you don't fumble yeah. the word. The word. It is stronger than what happens. The word uh, is the rock. It was settled from the beginning of time. And I know that we might get weary, but the Bible says don't get weary in your well-doing. For in due season, you are going to reap if you don't give up. So keep sowing. Keep sowing expectation. Keep sowing faith. Keep sowing inspiration and encouragement. Keep speaking like my parents did. Keep speaking over this. This shall come to pass. And when the enemy comes in like a flood and tries to talk you out of what God has given to you, when God gives you a word, he has given you something. You, you literally have something. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Fight for it. Fight through your tears. Fight through your disappointment. Hold on to that word because in the end, it is going to speak. Be like Anna and say, you know what? I'm not going to die until I see what I believe God for manifest in front of my eyes. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, it doesn't stop, does it? I mean, you know, you, you, you got called in the ministry. You know, mama's prayer was answered. But you got to hold on to that expectation because oh. it doesn't stop. The attacks don't stop. The process doesn't stop. I mean, television has a way of, of projecting a one-dimensional look. People come by the screen, they look and say, oh, wow, yeah, yeah, I've heard about this couple. And many are talking about the influence that you have across this country. And yet, uh, 
you, you don't just go through a thing. It is a constant journey. I mean, th- there were moments in your life, PT, that you, uh, even after having received the call to ministry, uh, that things were coming against the very uh, destiny you knew belonged to you. Certainly. I think that when, when God called me to preach, he revealed to me how enormous the call of God that was on my life was. I mean, huge. Uh, Not by description, but by the touch of my heart. He enlarged my heart for the vision. So I knew that it was huge. But when I tell you I went through things Mm -hmm. that would uh, disqualify, that, that I would disqualify myself from the huge, you know, namely, you know, going through a divorce. You know, um, no scandals, no adultery, just over, you know. And, uh, and sometimes when things happen to you, uh, you believe that th- when one thing leaves, the promise leaves. Mm. And, uh, and I had to uh, really hold on to, I had to cast not away my confidence yeah. uh, and to look up and to see how God, uh, even in spite of, and to a certain degree, <laughs> in conjunction with, yeah. uh, use that thing to bring me into my purpose. Sometimes your purpose and your destiny is packaged like a dilemma. Wow. It, it's it's wow. dressed up like trouble. And, and you, you just have to, to learn to face it, stand up to it, and know that the bets are still on. Mm. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. Though he fall, he shall not utterly be cast down because the Lord upholds him by his righteous right hand. And I got to tell you, you know, Pastor Phil, um, I've had this this dream in my heart as it relates to God and and doing great things and touching the world for Jesus Christ. But it has seemed like for, for, you know, I've been in ministry for 17 years. So it seemed like it was taking long. You know, it was like, is this going to happen? You know, and then a suddenly, as you are faithful over what's in front of you and and you stay focused on the call of God, loving God, loving people. And I looked up one day. I'm serious. It's a suddenly. I believe there's a suddenly in store for for somebody. If you're watching this right now, I think that there's a suddenly a sign to your life. And I hear God saying, as I mentioned before, don't be weary in your well-doing. Keep on sowing. Keep on believing. Check your heart. Lay yeah. down. Fast. Pray and fight. And you're going to look up and there's going to be a suddenly where there is a restoration of things. Everything that you thought you lost. I feel it for somebody. Come is on. coming back to you now just as if it were there the entire time. Those that know your father, of course, I would consider him one of the greatest preachers of our generation. Uh, and uh, But those that have not really met or been with your mother, mm-hmm. your mother is so classy and so funny. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and, and when she, she, you just see her on that platform, and she just looks so pretty and so classy. <laughs> but she's got a personality and a humor that is, uh, it kind of stunned me the first time that I was around. I thought, what? <laughs> and you carry that. Uh, and it seems to me, uh, PT and Sarah, that God is opening up favor for women. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, unfortunately, it's take, you know, the world had to, you know, we see that I always tell people, God judges what he loves. Mm-hmm. And it's clear that women have been taken advantage of in the works place, uh, taken advantage of in places of the arts like Hollywood. And God has come in and just shook. And now we're seeing women like you rise up with a voice that's not just speaking to women, but to all of us. And uh, uh, I want you to give you a chance to talk about your wife for a moment because you and I were talking about uh, how men right. need to handle this season where God is saying, I'm going to make up some stuff that has been unjust, unfair, and I'm going to bless my daughters Ooh. in this season. Absolutely. We're seeing that, aren't we? We, we are seeing it. I, uh, it was about five years ago, the Lord gave me a word, and it was the age of the woman. And, uh, and it was crazy because why would God give a man a word that basically was saying that God was going to use women 
in an unprecedented way. I knew it was God. I remember trembling as I preached that message, not realizing that I would ultimately be married to a world shaker yeah. in, in Sarah. Um, I think that the most persecuted people group on the planet is the woman. Yeah, no doubt. From the very beginning, and Sarah has a revelation on that that I, that I wanted to share as it relates to Eve. But, but you know, most men, if we're honest in the kingdom, we want to be Joseph, right? But we want to be the Joseph who was the king in Egypt, second or second to Pharaoh in Egypt. We want to be, you know, Joseph the businessman, Joseph the, the prosperous one. But I think that there's another Joseph that we failed to look at. Oh, wow. And it was the Joseph who provided an environment for Mary mm. to birth the Messiah. Oh, my goodness. So the, the challenge for us as men is to be whole enough and secure enough in our purpose and our role that we might become Joseph's, that we might encourage mm. our sisters that God is raising up, that we wow. might, might create an environment that we might not compete but complement and support and lift them up because if they birthed what God has placed on the inside of them just like the Virgin Mary, we're going to yeah. see the earth shake in the mighty name of Jesus. We're going to see things. The, the Bible says that the woman... I, I want to let her preach it because no one preaches it like her. In fact, what does the Bible say about the woman? What does the Bible say about the woman, honey? In Genesis 3 and 15, after Eve has it, be, be, uh, eaten from the forbidden fruit, yeah. the, God tells the serpent that the seed of the woman is going to crush his head. But he also says that the seed of the serpent is going to bruise her heel. Mm -hmm. And so I have been really, really helping so many women understand that just because your heel has been bruised by a divorce, by a teen pregnancy, doesn't mean that that you can't crush the serpent's head. But specifically, I said <laughs> bruised heels still crush serpent's head. So I don't know Woo! what you're doing, girl, but I want you to know that that bruised heel, no matter what it is, divorce, miscarriages, whatever you've gone through, that bruised heel still crushes serpent's head. And how do I know? Because I get up on the stage, I hold a micro microphone with my teen pregnancy, with my divorce, with my insecurities, with my fears, and I tell the devil, you know what? You picked on the right one because this heel is huh. going to pick up my foot and I'm going to crush it over your head every single chance I get. Wow. <laughs> so there, right there in Genesis from the very beginning is the pronouncement that through the woman, yeah. the serpent would be defeated. No wonder she's the most persecuted people group on the planet. No matter any place you go to in the yeah. world, the woman is the most persecuted. But I tell you what, time's up. <laughs> Me too, and whatever else you want to say, it is the year of the woman, and I'm rolling with her. Yeah, rolling with her. Exactly. I think, and I think it, it is important. I think with uh, we see all these movements, uh, uh, even among some of our our teaching team here at TVN, Christine Kane and Joyce Myers and Beth Moore, all of these women. And I, actually, I'm going to encourage you. We need to have a conference on for men on how to <laughs> handle these powerful, strong women. I'm, that God is doing. I'm passionate about it. Yeah. I'm passionate about it. I think that as women, though, I think that as we're really learning how to navigate this power and this platform, that one of the things we have to comp constantly keep at the forefront of our mind is that our power is not meant to crush the man. Yeah. It, too, is meant to complement and support yeah. the man. So just because I finally have an opportunity to speak out doesn't mean I want to crush my partner. At the end of the day, I need him to win yeah. because we are in partnership. And at the end of the day, honestly, outside of the lights, the camera, and the church, we have children and families to raise. And I don't want to be so powerful powerful as a woman that I don't teach my sons how a woman still needs to be held and supported and to really live in that environment that her husband creates. So there is a place for... Yeah, and it does not it does not take value away from the man. That yeah. That's a that's a perversion in the movement yeah. where, you know, we don't need no man. And then, shut up. Because <laughs> that, 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 that's stupid. That's yeah. stupid. Yeah. And, and, and I'm not saying... Can I say stupid on TVN? No, I'm sorry. Yeah. no. I can't. Yeah. No. Yeah, yes, that's stupid. No, okay. uh, but, but <laughs> because, and of course, I'm not promoting being codependent. Or I'm not saying that. But, um, but the man, his job, he, he is valid. He's a part of this movement, right? Right. right. He, he should pray prayerfully and offer wisdom to it, offer covering to it. Joseph wasn't a nobody. 
He was creating an environment. Mary couldn't have done what she did. She couldn't have yeah. birthed Jesus without Joseph covering her, covering her reputation, yeah. Yeah. right? Covering her financially and right. other ways. And right. so, so this is not, you know, pro-women does not mean anti-man, right? Yeah. right? Uh, women evolving or a women's empowerment movement does not mean the, the emasculation of men. Yeah. You know, that, that's, and, and, and we have to get, we have to have a, a, a clear and concise conversation so that we will understand what our roles are, what our roles are as men in the context of this movement. And I believe it is simple. It is to cover, it is to support, yeah. it is to protect, it is to pray into. We are the midwives to this movement. Wow. Well, it, it is, and it's for real. Uh, Jeannie and I uh, founded a church and, uh, and actually, this is our 40th year of marriage, and she had a call of God on her life that I fought for a long time. And she would, you know, I would say, you're called because you married me. And uh, I'm a little ashamed of that now, but uh, uh, that's all under the blood. And, and I remember, you know, it, stupid is a good word. But I remember saying to her, you know, okay, so what happens if I die? If I die, what happens to you? And at that point, it was going to be like, well, I would be devastated and I would be out of the ministry, of course. And she said, I would continue my ministry. Yeah. And, and because God called me before yeah. I ever married you. Ooh. And that's when I knew. Okay, uh, this is not your father's religion, <laughs> but it, it is important. And, and you kind of brushed over something I think is important that I want to drill down on for a couple minutes, and that is, yeah, how do you write books, conference speaker, pastor a church, uh, and at the same time, uh, find balance, mm -hmm. both as a man, a woman, keeping your marriage together, mm -hmm. at the same time managing, you know, from two-year-old to 21-year-old, Talk to us about the, the challenges and how you guys have found grace in that whole journey. Well, when Tere and I got married, one of the things that was important to me, especially as a single mom bringing kids into a relationship, was that I married someone who saw me properly. Because I knew that if he saw me properly, that he would be able to help facilitate everything attached to my name, calling and purpose included. I didn't want to get married because I felt like it was a prize. I wanted to get married because I felt like he understood I was a mission field and he was a mission field. And we wanted to bring out the best mm -hmm. in God's glory in one another. And so one of the things that has helped us as we blend our family and, and balance our lives. Our churches are blended families, okay? Like yeah, everything in our life exactly. is blended is that he sees me properly and I see him properly. And because I see him properly, whenever I notice that he needs downtime or when I notice that the church in LA may need something, we're able to look at one another's lives and say, babe, this is where, you know, you could stretch yourself. This is doing well. And so I think we added perspective to one another's life through our marriage that has helped us to balance things out yeah. yeah so true and we um we, we know to to whom much is given uh much is required and much is required from you know those who have been given much so we we are very very intentional about checking on where things are um, checking on where we are in our relationship do we need time together uh, we prioritize things a lot comes at us but we have really a checklist on whether or not we do it. And we have, mm. you know, four quadrants that, that really help us to define what to take and what not to take. And if we find ourselves out of balance, we have no problem calling in sick to work. <laughs> on, Let a me tell you, on a Sunday. On a Sunday. He's Listen, called in and said, we're having family day. We're having family. You know, we, yeah. I was traveling with the book, and, uh, and this was actually just less than a month ago. And we just felt the tension, you know, from our kids in the house. And we felt like we needed a Sunday off. And I have great staff in both campuses. And I said, guys, we're taking this Sunday off. We're going to make it a family day. Run on with it. Wow. And we did that. And so balance is everything. And, uh, and making certain that what's most important, which for us is our individual relationship with God, our marriage, and our family doing well. And then we get down to our spiritual family. And I think having a great team to help protect that is important as well. Absolutely. Uh, what, do you, what do you think is the most important ingredient for, uh, and, and you really, we, we got a parallel going of a blended family and a blended vision. What, what would be the overall attitude that someone needs to be able to embrace to watch God take two paths and make them one. Wow. I think, I think uh, faith first, faith to believe that God has brought 
these two universes together. Yeah. Okay, so, so God, if you brought these two yeah. universes together, then you have a strategic plan as to how to integrate them if we get ourselves out of the way. Um, I think humility is very important. Mm. Um, the Bible talks about esteeming others more highly than yourselves and, uh, and communication. You know, I know you asked for two, but I think I gave you three, but, <laughs> but, but communication, let's talk about how are we feeling. You know, I won't birth a ministry without her approval. You know, Woman Evolve, this incredible conference that we're doing in Denver in July, you know, it, it's, it's her face, but it's us behind the scenes. Yeah, yeah. And so, so you get two for, even when you're getting one, you're really getting two. You're getting yeah. both of us. And so, so I think uh, communication, humility, uh, and faith, trusting that if God brought these two universes together, he'll give you the wisdom as to how to steward the integration. Right. No, I think that's powerful. You're standing behind him. Is that a unique? Is that happen every once in a while? Or what are you doing behind him? I'm <laughs> I love him. It. I'm praying for him. Yeah. I'm, I'm t I don't, just because I have a platform doesn't mean that every time he's on stage that I need to be on stage. I feel like as his wife that I'm there to pray and push back any darkness that would that. dare keep his message from coming forth. So, I mean, for me being behind the scenes doesn't feel like odd or strange. It feels like the perfect place for me to stand and cover and watch his back. And he does the same thing for me. I can hear him when I'm speaking. I can be in an auditorium, in an arena full of people, and I hear him going, go, baby, push, <laughs> baby, get it, baby. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I love that. And I think that's what you have to do, you know, bringing your families together. And let me just lean into the church thing a bit. How? Obviously, the, num the most important thing is that you knew God did this. I mean, let's back up a little bit. You're pastoring uh, One Church LA, and then you guys get married. The Denver situation, I mean, very unique. The millennials, the entertainment industry, and then a church without casting any shadow. A lot of churches gone through a lot of pain. Yeah. I think one of you guys preached on how to deal with pain caused by the church. Yeah. So you're dealing with such a unique, it was God, yeah. and then... What do you see as being something that has been a part of making this work? Yeah, well, I think that, that move itself was just obedience. You know, I went to the church. I went there t with my father-in-law, Bishop Jakes, to encourage him as he was encouraging the leaders through their transition. I walked in there because I had a heart for Bishop. I saw the people and walked out of there with a the heart for them. Mm. And, uh, and God said, you know, through over a series of months, I'm calling you uh, to that church. Um, but I think that, you know, we, we are called to pain. We're, we're, we're attracted to pain. There's a lot of pain in L.A., you know, and, uh, and I, don't, I, I just, um, you know, what, Isaiah 61, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He's anointed me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives. And so um, I'm at my best when I find somebody broken. Wow. Uh, you know, I, I, a wholeness is, is my mandate, you know, getting people whole and set free as a new book is, you know, out, you know, but um, I, I think that I'm just drawn wow. to the pain of people. And I also see the best in every person. I don't care how a person sees themselves. I see them as one created in the image of God, whether that's an individual or a church. There was a destiny on the Potter's House, Denver, uh, you know, and, and just because there was some transition, again, the destiny wasn't lost. I think to a certain degree, the Potter's House, Denver represented my own life, yeah. right? We had some transition, we had some trouble, but guess what? We're gonna get back on this thing, we're gonna press in, we're gonna lay hold of all the promises that, that were uh, on that church before I got there, and, uh, and we're seeing incredible things take place. I believe God can fix Anything. Yeah, yeah. Anything. No, I think you said, I think you said something very revealing that I, I, I think that, you know, every pastor, every Christian, the whole Christian community, when you said uh, you, you were made for pain, that you, you're drawn to pain, uh, I think the best definition of sin is, mm. is pain. Mm -hmm. wow. I think the wages of sin is death by pain. Yeah. Wow. And I think that uh, I, tell, I try to tell pastors, I work with Joel Osteen and Champions Network and we work with hundreds of pastors. And I say, you know, if you're working on your message, stand back and make sure, how's this addressing the pain? Because yeah. mm. people are in pain. So you said something that I think is powerful. 
drawn to pain. Don't be afraid of pain. Yeah. I mean, that, that's, you know, the old story of the guy that they, a shoe company sent him to a country and he was there for two or three weeks and said, man, send me back. Why'd you send me here? These people don't even wear shoes. Mm -hmm. And then a few years later, another salesman was sent and he was there for like two or three days and he said, send me 50,000 pairs. Mm -hmm. These yeah. people don't even wear shoes. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to see pain as why we're here. Absolutely. Right. And, and when you embrace that, and then, uh, and then it says that sin is falling short of the glory of God. So pain is the result of sin, and sin is missing the mark yes. of God's best. Yes. And I think we're so sideways. We're talking about people's habits, their dysfunction, what they do wrong, as if that's bothering God. Yeah. Right. You know, is God bothered by our bad habits? Yeah. No, he's bothered when he had a destiny that before time began and you're not walking in it. That's what hurts yeah. God. So to see you doing that, uh, I think, is a reflection on the fact that uh, pastors, leaders, moms, blended families don't run from pain. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I think one of the things that has really been a mark in our life is our pursuit of uncovering that which makes us uncomfortable so that we can understand who we are as a result of experiencing that discomfort. So even Denver, we had to be willing to leave that which we Ooh. did well in order to understand where our weakness is and ultimately for God to show us where his strength could be made perfect. And the same has existed in every area of our life as our family has come together. God has revealed areas where we could become I could become a stronger mother, our children could become stronger teenagers, and it took one another's trust and perspective about our life to say, here I am, this is uncomfortable, it's awkward, but here I am, I wanna grow, I wanna learn, and I trust your perspective and your love to help me grow into who God has called me to be. I'm a testimony of the grace that is bearing such great fruit. Mm -hmm. And I'm just so proud of both of you. And and I, I wanna say, in in. In just a few moments, I'm going to ask uh, Sarah and PT to to take a hold of the eyes of this network and go into your living room, into your life, and to just release out of their spirit an anointing that I believe that God will release to you. And I, I just want to take a moment to say uh, a big thank you and appreciation to Matt and Lori Crouch because uh, they've done the same thing. They've taken a vision that was 40 years and, and it, by a pioneer that worked very, very hard and was driven uh, uh, unstoppable, both Paul and Jan, and then for uh, the next generation to come in and to reach out to the, to the uh, former and, and to those that got us where we are and to appeal to them to say, hey, stay with us, don't leave us, because this is a blended thing God's doing at TBN. We're not neglecting the past. We're saying to the past, go with us into the future. And we're speaking to the future programming that doesn't relate to a lot of the audience that's watching now because Matt and Lori are thinking about the ones that will be coming by, the ones that will be watching. And so I, I just want to say as someone that's been uh, hosting for over 25 years uh, to say to all of our viewers, stay with us, stay strong. First of all, know God is in it, like P.T. said. It's of God, so keep your faith. And number two, let's all be humble. Uh, we're not going to always like everything that everyone does. And let's be graced with humility. And uh, so I, I wanted to take that moment to say on behalf of Jeannie and I, what, a, what an honor it is to see uh, watch Matt and Lori. At one point, if I may, uh, Matt and Lori were members of our church. I remember I told somebody this yesterday, they were, they were shocked. They never missed Sundays. They were there every Sunday. They took their turn in the nursery. Oh. I remember watching Matt and Lori go in the nursery and do nursery duty. I mean, they were true uh, saints and members and, and our friendship has continued through the years but uh, it's all about helping people in their pain and no matter what people say television is still one of the most powerful forces because it, it comes into people's homes and people can watch without anybody mm -hmm. you know criticizing them or are you know what, what's anybody going to think and it's just an incredible opportunity so I want to I want to ask you Sarah to go first and then uh, PT to, to follow, uh, to just speak to the hearts of the people, yeah. not to be afraid of their pain, yeah. to know that may, they may be the one for the we, but God has orchestrated this, this moment, 
And uh, I want to give you uh, permission and the right to step into the world of those that are watching and pray for them. Well, there's a part in my husband's book, Wholeness, there's a chapter that says it's okay not to be okay. And one of the things that the rhythm of life often robs us of is the ability to say, I'm not doing okay. Mm. Well, right now in this moment, we have an opportunity to say, you know what? Ouch, that hurt me. Mm. That didn't feel good. And I think it may have changed the way I see my future, changed the way I see my potential. And I want you to know that I've been there. I understand exactly what you're going through and exactly how you feel when the tears stream down your face so long that they stop streaming and they just stream on the inside. Mm. And I want you to know that God is with you the same way that he was with me. That if you would dare to allow that pain to be real, that you can process it in such a way that you recognize that there is wisdom hidden in those wounds. Mm. You're stronger as a result of what you face. There is power down on the inside of you because of the pain that you endured. And sometimes life has to squeeze strength out of us. But when life gets finished, squeeze and you look up and you recognize that I did not just survive to be normal or to go back to the way things were. I survived so that I could reach back and help someone who has experienced this darkness, who is experiencing this depression to understand that survivors know how to walk with a limp. Hmm. Bruised heels still crush serpent's <laughs> head. So I'm praying that God would continue to allow you to be reminded of his love, that he would allow this message to permeate so deep in your heart that even when it goes off, you you still feel his presence. And for some strange reason of decades of you living with this pain, for all, all of a sudden you feel like you can embrace it. Someone's got to love that little girl who was broken. Someone has to embrace that little boy who experienced the pain. I want to challenge you to be the person who picks up the pieces of their life and says, I'm going to love you with the love of God and God is going to show me how to move forward. Mm, beautiful. Yeah. Hallelujah. And I'll, and I'll just add to that, a lot of times when you're in pain, you feel alone. You feel like you are, you're by yourself. You feel like nobody's been through what you've been through. You feel like it's insurmountable. But I want to remind you that there's a man named Jesus. Amen. And, uh, and the word calls him a high priest who, and I might paraphrase, is very, very intimately acquainted with our sufferings. Because on the cross... Jesus Christ became our pain. He became our weakness. He became our bondage. He was rejected. He was hurt. He was physically marred and all these things. And he took all of that upon himself so that you didn't have to carry it. He took it upon himself. He died with it in his body. And when he was raised up free and victorious, that was a promise to you that if you hang in there, I will raise you up too. And so I want you to look to Jesus and when you're in pain and I'm not being insensitive, but I want you to look to him because you're going to make it. You're going to come through this. And so, Father, I just agree with this prayer that's been prayed. And I thank you that the power of the cross, the power of what you became on the cross, everything broken with humanity and you broke what was broken so that we might be whole and well. And the best is still yet to come. It is not over. You know the plans you have. Remember that God's got a future for you, and we love you. We're standing with you. At TBN, our mission is to use every available means to reach as many individuals and families as possible with the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for helping make the gospel of grace go around the world. Without you, we couldn't do it. God bless you.